As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's right. eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only, Three Pete McGee. What's up, dude? Holla! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know what that's from? Holla? Do you... I'm going to let you in on a little something here. Okay. I have been watching, for the first time, Roni Season 7. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Heather Thompson for you. A little what got, gala. What got you hooked on that? So, let's just say I've, I've been rewatching it a little bit. I was uh, influenced. Oh. Oh. oh yeah, I'm doing a little, and every single time the new episode starts, I yell holla. Yeah. Goes over really well. Does it? Yep. Does it? So, involved. Oh, I see what's happening. So, yeah, um, doing that, and uh, yeah, three-peat. We got a lot going on here. If you can't tell, I am lounging. You're not watching on YouTube. You're missing us. Big-time lounger. I always are tired. I'll make sure that you keep your foot off of the couch. You're doing a good job so far. This is what I do. No, the one day you had the heel, of the sole of your shoe, and that was like the week I bought the couch, too, by the way. So... I'm just watching. Was I'm, it this? Oh, it was this couch. I thought you were talking couch. about your couch in the living room. No, you've done it in there too. Yeah, but I kept my. I've got body control. I got feet control. You know. You do right now. I'm just keeping you on guard. All right. Okay. Yeah. I right, settle down. You settle down. You said you. You get excited, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> but as Shooter said, it's been a long day for the boys. We had our Valley recap earlier. Then we had an interview with West, and now we are doing Vanderpump, and we do it all for yous. This is why we're here for the listeners. We, we're not going to take time off just because Shooter's got a bachelor party in Schittsburg. We're not going <laughs> to yeah. do that. We got to get these episodes in. So we're here. We're pulling a three-peat today. And we got a lot of thoughts on this Vanderpump episode. But before we get into it, the season has shifted. And last week was a really good episode. The week before that was a solid episode. What do you think about tonight? Is it carrying over continuously? It's uh, it's starting to level out a little bit, which is fine. Yeah. It's, it's good. Like, I'm not super annoyed. I feel like there's enough going on, one, from a content point for us to talk about where people are being really annoying and stupid. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not getting redundant. It's not, which, honestly, I feel like that's the trap that it was going to fall into. That's where it was going, yeah. Where we were just going to have the same conversation every episode, and it was going to get really boring. But now we've kind of shifted to other things. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of that right now. And obviously, we had the Jack sighting at the end, which we talked about. If you listen to our Valley episode, I don't know what you're listening to first. Oh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing because we already kind of talked about the jacks of it all. But we're of course going to make sure we revisit that from the VPR side, not the Valley side. I think they're doing a pretty good job right now. And while I don't agree with what everybody's doing, sure, i.e., everybody not on Team Katie, sure, I am enjoying watching it. I am too. I am too. The uh, there's obviously some splits going on in the group. We're seeing some dynamic shifts, uh, i.e. Sandoval and people warming up to him again. What I liked about this episode is we finally get a scene with Ariana that is production didn't try to fuck her over. Like, we actually get to see her have a conversation with Sheena, and it's mm -hmm. genuine, and it goes very well, and we'll, we'll get to that later. But I agree with you. I think that we finally hit a stride. That's what I'm going to say. We've hit our stride in VPR this season, which is great because I was nervous. After episode yeah. four, I was like, shit, this is this is going to be a flop of a season, which is a shame, coming off of Scandaval last year, but they have righted the ship. I'm enjoying this season. It's almost like setting up right now. I feel like they're- Yeah, right? You know, they're, it's like they're getting a little plotty. Yes. But it's good plot. Yep. And we know what's going to happen with the climax. And obviously, there's some rumors out there about how the reunion ended. Yeah. Which you know, I'm happy to get into. Versus- uh, Ariana. Versus Ariana or is yeah. it Lala versus Katie or Lala also versus that Katie too. I, I'm assuming if Ariana was going after Lala, there's also some Katie involvement. But well, yeah, Ari Ariana went after Lala. Yeah, Lala went after Ariana. Ariana went after Lala. I mean, she's got reason to. So Lala yeah. has been talking shit the whole season. So between that and the after show, I don't know if you watched the after show. I saw clips of it. Yeah, yep. with uh, it, well, it was Brittany, of course, because we've got the crossover episode. Brittany sitting with Lala, and Lala is continuously just talking shit about Ariana and all the things that she's doing. 
It is the most tone deaf bullshit that I've ever seen in my life. Not a good look. You man. made a lot of money off of Ariana. A ton. How about you just send be it thankful. to Daryl? Mm hmm. Let's not forget, send it to Daryl. Let's just be thankful for what you have. Yeah. I and don't know, nothing man. else. Well, it's going to lead to a, an interesting reunion. There's a clip of Katie. I, I think it might have been on Watch What Happens Live or it might have been the after show, but it was uh, this reunion is much different than last year, which I mean, obviously. It's not people screaming at Sandoval for three hours, yep. but at the same time, the tone, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. I hope and pray that we don't get a three-part reunion. I hope that they at least do it in two. Something tells me it'll be three. It'll be three. <sighs> Just accept it now. It's not easy. Rip the band off. Just, I know it's not easy. It's I, not. Trust me, I know. I'm in this with you. Yeah, I know, but... I think it's better if we just assume now it's three. Because, look, if we just assume it's three the entire time and they it's say... two. The special two-part reunion, we are... Elated. Ecstatic. Yes. Bonerific. But I don't say that. I don't like that word. Bonerific? No, that's not great. I kind of like Bricked it. up is way better. Bricked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't forget, don't don't forget your roots. While. Don't forget your roots. All right? <laughs> bricked up. Okay? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but let's dive right into this episode... And we start out with Katie and Ariana and their FaceTiming, and Tom is having a party. He's having a sexy singles party, as Ariana named it, which I love that name. It's very, very apt for this party. Yeah. Who the fuck are these people? Dude, I don't know. It's a who's who of who the fuck are these people. It's like... It's worse than the first party. It is. It's like Vanderpump... Like diet Vanderpump rules. That's what it is. It's like the the island of reject Vanderpump castmates. Did, did you see Jason again? No. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. Dude, the Hawaiian him. shirt just dripped oh. down. Like, dude, what are you doing? When he, why are you there? I don't know why he's there because Tom needs friends. That's the only reason Jason's there. I don't know that Tom needs friends. Who are all these people? I don't know. Yeah, I think he just went to Sir one night and he's sipping on his Heineken zero point zero, and he's like, hey, you know, check out my ombre nail polish uh i've got love, a yeah. i've got a roommate it's ombre <laughs> it, it's ombre i've got a roommate back here you know it's it's pretty chill though you know not like but i got a pool maybe you can come by and he just does that 50 times to yeah. all different people probably like groups of guys and girls because he just wants people to come by yeah I, I think that that's definitely his move where he just says annoying quiet shit until they're like all right fine we get to go over and that's the thing you can be on tv yeah and like when he's talking to those girls in the pool Ugh. which oh my god but it, it took him what thirty minutes from that uh, Rat Pack weird meat Brazilian boy night. Oh yeah. They, eventually, Schwartz goes, "Dude, you got to get out there and start dating again, man." It took him thirty minutes to be like, "You know what? Maybe it is time." Uh, you know what? Is I'm... it time? Your entire life just fucking imploded because you're a piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna Let's do? Let's go invite some chicks from Sir to back Ariana's to house. To Ariana's house. What are yeah. we doing here? But before we get into that scene, like in depth. We get Katie and Lala, and they have a sit-down together to clear the air, because we saw them. They've been going back and forth pretty much all season, and yeah. that's because Lala's changing her stance on Sandoval. I saw a really interesting clip from Give Them Lala. It was her and Sheena, and they were talking specifically about the fact that people are going to want to go back to Sandoval's side. If you're a true friend to Ariana, you won't do that. Verbatim, they say something along those lines, like... They're literally doing what they spoke out against mm -hmm. in her podcast, but that's causing a lot of tension. Before the rebrand? So now it's just called Give Them? Give Them, yeah. I'm still confused about it, honestly. <laughs> but but they are trying to reconcile here, and I thought this conversation was actually very mature. And Lala acknowledges, you know, I went way too hard, and that's, that's her MO, and Katie's as well. Like, Katie goes for the throat. Lala goes for the throat. They both don't compliment each other well when they do get in a fight. But, but it is entertaining to watch. Like, they are heavy hitters. And they they're are. They're the ones who don't pull any punches. Yeah. And they, it seems like when one hits hard or below the belt, the other one doesn't react that much. Like, they're just ready for another one. They come right back at you. It is really fun to watch. It's, it is. I would watch the two of them on a show just going after each other the entire time. That would be a good episode for me. I think, I'm, both because they can hold their own against each yeah. other. I think that that's a big part. The only time it gets a little awry is when somebody takes it too far, and then it's just more like an insult thing, and then you lose track of like... Yeah, and then they come back the next episode, they sit down for lunch, and they apologize again. And then they fight it all again. over. Yeah. Well, at their, they have had a falling out since the reunion. They're not talking anymore. But good. <laughs> I did appreciate that Lala acknowledges, like, I'm not trying to make it about me when I'm trying to relate to a situation. 
Katie counters and says, yeah, but can you see how that can be misconstrued into thinking that you are trying to do that? And it can because she tries to do it in every single instance. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, Lala says, can you soften up a little bit when it comes to how you treat me? Katie acknowledges it. Well, hey, that's that's who I am. And I'm trying to work on that. I'll try to be better about it. They they have a kumbaya moment. Things seem good. They come up with a safe word, croissant. How do you say it? You say croissant, right? Croissant. Okay, good. Yeah, same. I did see a TikTok where some French dude said Americans should say croissant. Croissant. But could you imagine like a French guy coming over here and being like in his full French accent and then at the very end saying McDonald's? How would you say a, in a French accent? McDonald's? <laughs> I, I can't do a French accent. But that's when we get back to uh, the Misfit Toys Party and... Sandoval's putting himself out there, man. You know, he, he decided it's time. He's, he's been through the ringer. It's time to get back out there. He's put in the work, you know? He's put in the work. It's yeah. time to reap some of the benefits. Sure. So he starts flirting a little bit after the ladies arrive. He leads off with a great toast. I mean, just a fantastic toast. Here's to staying positive and testing negative. You are 43 years old, sir. You are in your mid 40s. Yeah, we funny. don't do this anymore. And I didn't realize no. I didn't realize it at the time. But if you think about that and then you think about Dodie's toast when they when she sat down at uh mm-hmm. at lunch in the valley, what was that one? Something basically she just talked about not wearing condoms. Yeah. Which I guess you know when she's trying to be pregnant, so maybe that's what she was referring to. I don't think it was, but I'm gonna uh, give her the benefit of the doubt. I think that toast is a standalone. I don't think it has anything to do with her trying to get pregnant. Yeah, maybe not. But those two together, it's like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't do that shit. <laughs> Just don't. Like, don't. like, it's cringy when a 21 year old dude in college, like a frat bro, does it. Yeah, here's to honor. To yeah, get don't honor do it when you're fucking honor. 40. Just stop it. Yeah, it was a terrible toast, but it was the perfect setup to what we are then watching. Because then, like, the I couldn't believe this is a leadoff. I was like, oh my God, this is like a fucking bad rom com. He's like, have you guys been to Burning Man? <laughs> like, he's sick, bro. Have you? I bet you have if you're asking us this. And then he makes that dumb roommate joke about Ariana. He's just bad at, if this is his version of flirting, it's tough to watch. It's genuinely tough to watch, but well, it's dude, even... It's been a while since he's been single. Let him shake all the cobwebs, you know? Shit. Bullshit. The fact that he said that line, I haven't put myself out there in a while. I haven't, like, I'm not good at this anymore. You flirted across the United States in every shitty bar that you played in with your shitty cover band. Like, this isn't the first time you've I mean, been he used to chick. just go do karaoke and take it very seriously. That's There's more, a lot of clips about that. That's more or less what that's he's doing. Super funny. Oh, that's what he's doing. Yeah, you, you haven't seen those clips. You gotta talk a little bit louder. You haven't that. seen those clips. Not of him doing karaoke, no. Oh, dude, they're incredible. It's like a dive bar in Kansas City, which I know he's from St. Louis, so like that makes sense. But it's a dive bar in Kansas City, and he's doing like Nine Inch Nails or something, just yelling through the microphone and performing, and everybody's laughing and like talking over him. Was Steve there? Uh, Something's date. Maybe. I could see Steve in the background just gearing up to do some. Uh, well, oh, what was his number one song? Uh, ah, it was. It wasn't Creed, right? No, it was something random. It was a solid one, though. Honestly, I can't remember what it was. Steve's doing like a love ballad. I could see Steve doing Queen. Power ballad. Yeah, Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, I could see Steve doing Queen. And, yeah. and think that he's hitting all of Freddie Mercury's high notes. And yeah, missing sure. them all. A thousand percent. But yeah, this is if this is what we have to look forward to for the rest of the season. I found it super funny. I did at the too. very least, I, I found it this. very entertaining. I found it very funny. I hope he continues to put himself out there and playing the awkward way. Like it's been so long since I've been out there, and he just openly tells girls that he's trying to flirt with. They know who you are. That's my whole thing. It's not that big. Like they for know one, Ariana lives here. Their faces aren't blurred. They signs the contract. They know that they're on Bravo. They know exactly who you are. Yep. They know what house they're in. They don't really have to put up with this shit. You don't have to be doing this. I think it's really funny. It was. It was entertaining. I could watch this all season. I yeah. could definitely watch this all season. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if he flounders like this. But if this is his game, how did he land the girl he's with now? It's somebody famous as X. Yeah. I thought it was somebody's daughter. No, it's their ex. Okay. Oh, God, it's somebody big, too. I need to look this up. I can't. I don't have my phone. It's recording. I'll look it up. Yeah, look this up. I got you. Don't worry. I'll cut out the dead air for you guys at home. She was linked to Leo in 2016, but there's no pictures of her and him. Oh, linked? She's 31. Six so years ago, 25? It is. Wow. No, no, no. You, six years ago in 2016? You want to read? it was six years ago. 
I, I said 2016. Said oh, I thought you said it was six years ago. I, I just immediately thought that you thought that it was still 2022, and that made me sad. No, no, no. So, yeah, but she was under... I mean, that happens. She was under it. 25. That's the yeah, Leo that, number. That checks out. So this all checks out. I'm just saying, I, if this is what he's bringing to the table as far as flirting goes, I don't understand. I don't get it. Maybe he worked on his game. Oh, he yeah, he's working on himself. You're right. You're right. It's a good call. Yep. But moving on from there, we get... Uh, the next morning, the house is a disaster, which it makes me so sad for poor Anne, who is Sandoval's assistant. I guess he's not. I thought he was both of their assistants. He's really not. Or sorry, she's both of their assistants. She's only Sandoval's assistant. She's, for she's only Sandoval's. Yeah. And then she is the quote unquote go between between them or, or mediator or whatever. Right. But I think that's Tom instructing her to do that yes. and Ariana putting up with it. Because the alternative is silence, silence, and not knowing where Tom's going to be, right? And then trying to plan something and not having any way of knowing that Tom is planning something at the same time. God, that would be good. Oh man, could you imagine if they both planned a party at the same night and didn't like communicate? I would love to. Whoa, watch that would be awesome. Tom's rando group of friends interacting with the actual VPR people would. Oh yeah, be. Gold, because even Schwartz doesn't want to hang out there. Schwartz is like, I'm fucking out of here. These guys are brutal. Like, I was so, I don't know. We don't have to go back to it. No, but, no, it's fine. But they're at the house, and the house is a mess, and poor Anna has to clean it up. And she goes upstairs. The first thing Sandoval says is, how's downstairs looking? I don't know, bro. Get off the treadmill with your fucking hand weights and go check, like, clean up a little bit. And he even says, like, I like to straighten up a little bit beforehand. No, you don't. That place was a disaster. Yeah. That's just unacceptable. He did absolutely nothing. That's like if you go and you stay in a hotel room and you just like fucking throw everything on the floor, pillows, blankets, all that, with no regard for the poor housekeeper that has to come in afterwards, and you don't leave a tip. If you don't leave some money in your hotel room for the person that cleans your room, that's a good tip for you. Pay the housekeeper because they have to clean up after you. That's a tip on tips. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that. That's important. But... What were we talking about? I don't fucking know. Sheena comes over, and they're planning a game night at Ariana's. And uh, the biggest thing here is we get a sit-down between these two because we've got a lot of in-betweens or go-betweens of what Sheena's been saying is being relayed to Ariana, and LVP is not communicating it as well as she should be, and that's probably because she's trying to start some drama because she has a full fledged producer now that's her only role in the show pretty much because any scene that we see her in it's it's so produced so fake so she was trying to drum up some nonsense i believe but i'm glad that they could have a real sit down here and even the lead off this is an ariana that we haven't gotten to see this season and i don't think that's because she hasn't been genuine i think that's because of a shit edit because they're trying to do the sandoval redemption arc yep which sucks because in this instance Ariana could be pissed at Sheena. Like, she could have an issue here where it's like, look, I thought you were on my team. You keep hanging out with him. I don't love it. Instead, she leads off with, people say you're upset with me, and she seems genuinely concerned about it. The first thing is the Dancing with the Stars drama. Now, I need to know, in my heart of hearts, how close was Sheena to getting selected? Did she have no one way. conversation with a producer no and got chance? In she hell. got dance lessons. Yep. Like to me, that would tell me that she's in the final process. And the only thing that makes sense to me here is why she's taking it so hard. And I don't believe this is what happened. And unless I get clarification on it, I, I will continue to believe that she didn't get that close to getting selected. But it's like you called out uh, last week or the week prior. If she was like right about to get it, and then Scandival broke, and Ariana became the biggest superstar on the planet, and then they shifted quickly, and we're like, oh, no, we want her now? Yep. That I get. I So I the reason that I don't think that that's the case is based off of the way that Lala is talking about it. And when Lala was talking about it in the after show, mm -hmm. she said, and Brittany was sitting there too, so it kind of like egged her on a little bit. She was talking about the Dancing with the Stars thing, and nothing's really adding up with all of this because Sheena had said, oh, I have to find out from Instagram that you are joining Dancing with the Stars, which made me feel like shit because you know how much I've wanted that. So you didn't come to me to tell me. Ariana's like, I had an NDA. Yeah. That's how that works. You're supposed to break your NDA? Until Dancing with the Stars announces who's going to be on the damn show, they can't tell anyone. They're not allowed to put it on social media. Of course, Ariana's not going to go to Sheena. She's going to tell everybody. a podcast who 
will go on her podcast and start talking about it because she wants listeners and she wants to make sure that she can pay Sandoval back that five grand that he gave her <laughs> a couple of years ago because that's what she has to do. Of course she's not going to tell Sheena. So no, there's just no self-awareness there. I don't think Sheena was anywhere close to any of that. And even the way that Lala was talking about it, she brought up, or rather Brittany brought up the Chicago thing. Lala laughed at it and said, oh yeah, Chicago. We didn't know about that until she announced it again. That's how that works. You're not allowed to announce these things until the production companies announce them. These people are fucking morons. Well, you know. They're morons and they're spinning a narrative to make Ariana look like the villain. They're doing it. Bravo's doing it. We're happy that Bravo didn't do it in this particular episode, but one out of what, eight or nine episodes in the season, they're not giving her a shit at it. Like, it's just so stupid to me. It's so dumb. And I'm tired of it. No, I I completely agree with you, but. But even in knowing all of that, like the logic in it where it's like, yeah, there's an NDA involved. Obviously, she can't tell you until the production company tells you. Ariana still takes accountability and says, you know what? I can see where you're coming from. I'm sorry. I wish that I could have told you before. There's no need for that. She doesn't have to do that. But this scene should go to show people that are like, it's so weird that there's an anti-Ariana train to me. I don't get it. I really don't. Especially because as we keep reminding people of, this is four months removed. Yeah. You're not that far away from her getting cheated on by a guy that she dated for over a decade. Like, that's the root of it. And for her to sit here with somebody that is hanging out with her ex and still take accountability for the Dancing with the Stars thing, which is not her fault. But the only question that she has with Sheena and, like, why she was hesitant, she's like, I need to know that you're being open with me. Because you're open with Lala, you guys have definitely gotten more connected than you and I have in the past. Or I guess they were close, Lala right, and Sheena. Right. And then Sheena has since leaned further towards Lala. And it seems to me that the the common denominator there is jealousy of Ariana. So she's getting pushed in that direction. So La, or Ariana is questioning where they stand. And that's fair, considering everything that's going on. But they start talking about Sandoval, and Sheena is still saying to her, like, I missed that friendship. Can you see why that this is different for me than everybody else in the group? Objectively speaking, okay, fine. You were friends with Sandoval longer. Fair. We'll give you that. But from Ariana's standpoint, like, for you to ask this question and then frame it in a five-year hypothetical, five years from now, if I go and do this and I end up hanging out with him, we grab dinner, whatever, like, how would you feel? Cut to the confessional. Ariana is not dumb. Yep. She is not dumb. She knows exactly what you're doing. You're testing the waters here to see how she reacts. And she sees right through it. And that's why she's great on this show. Because she's five steps ahead of the other idiots on this show. And she's like, mm, I would oh, give you a side eye. We don't call them idiots anymore. Oh, yeah, we're not allowed to say idiots. Uh, I just said morons. Yeah. Change it up a Moron. little. Moron? Yeah. Okay, fine. She's five steps ahead of the other morons in this show. <laughs> and even with that knowledge, like that's the best part. She holds on to things. She doesn't throw it out there. She doesn't have to. She just takes it for what it is. She sees what Sheena's trying to do. Yep. She compartmentalizes it, holds it in, and says, I would give you a side eye. Not like, oh, I'm grossed out by you, but mm, he's going to fuck you over again. Oh, of course. And I think at the end of the day, Ariana knows what Sheena's doing. Sheena is talking about now. She's not talking about five years from now. Correct. Sheena's too much of a coward to just come right out and say, look, I want to be able to talk to him. I want to be able to heal our relationship Outside of what you guys are going through, mm. because he was my friend from before. I think on a deeper level, Ariana would, you know, try to respect that. And then she can internalize the fact that, look, you're going to be in danger. You're going to let that guy back into your life. He's going to screw you over again. Yeah. But that's on you. That's your prerogative. You want to go ahead and do that? Go ahead and do that. I'm not going to hang out with you if you're going to hang out with him all the time. I will hang out with you away from him. And if you're now going to go get dinner with him, like we discussed last week, and you're going to go out on a Wednesday night and hang out you're going to start getting closer to him, then I'm going to have to cut you out of my life. And that is what I'm going to do to keep myself safe. All of those things are very true. Sheena's just too afraid to come out and tell her what she wants to do. She's too afraid to come out and say, I'm jealous that you got Dancing with the Stars. Yep. And look, I get it. You're not going to come right out and tell a friend that you're jealous of another friend. But people watch the goddamn confessionals. People watch the goddamn show. Have some awareness. Realize that at the end of the year, Ariana's going to watch it and be like, they're fucking jealous as hell. Her and yeah. Lala. And it's the dumbest thing in the world because you guys would still be scraping the bottom of the barrel with your stupid podcasts, trying to get anything that you possibly could if it wasn't for Ariana. Agreed. She uh, deserves 
She Ariana deserves all the things that she was getting. Definitely. For what she had to deal with last year in the public eye and go through all of that where everybody knows what's going on. Yes, they're supporting her. Yes, they're raising her up. But it's fucking difficult to do all those things. She rose to stardom, did all the stuff that she wants to do, is bigger than the show, rightfully so, because she saved the show indirectly. You should just be happy that you were able to ride her coattails. I agree. How the fuck are you not, like, happy about that? That That's just, it's so stupid. The only thing I'll say is that Lala was still, like, a top-rated podcast or a top-charting uh, podcast before this. That's all I'm going to say. This definitely pushed her to a totally different level, though. Yeah, like she should be thankful. I agree with you, 100%. I'm just... I was, I was just, talking more about Sheena's podcast. She, well, apparently, it got, quote-unquote, canceled in 2020, which yeah. I still... What does that mean? I need to know what that means. Yeah, you can do a podcast independently. Um, well, well, unless she like, company. unless they owned her IP, that's the only way they could cancel. I it. wouldn't be surprised if she yeah, maybe allowed them. Well, to no, because it's still shenanigans. Yeah, I don't get it. Maybe they brought her back. I don't fucking know. That's what I'm saying. Like, if we got dropped by maybe our, they put her on pause. <laughs> well, we're getting layers. Yeah, layers to this. But let's keep moving. Onions have layers. All right, Shrek. I got onions. Greg, can you milk me? <laughs> <laughs> But we get to a oof, an interesting scene with Tom and Joe. And they interesting how? Ah, uh, you're gonna hate me. Don't come on. I didn't know you were gonna do this. No, 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 no. Just just bear with me. All right, just bear with me. You're rooting for them as a really No, 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 nope. Okay. No, I'm not. Not at all. I, I the more I see Joe on screen, yes, she's cringy, she's awkward. Is like she's catching a lot of shit. And I'm just wondering, is she genuinely just kind of weird and quirky? Like, she shouldn't catch shit for being a weirdo. Yeah, it was weird as hell. She should not have texted Katie, I love you, and Bieber loves you. Like, she should hate her. Katie has every right to hate yeah. her. But I, I guess I don't understand why every girl in the group is so anti-Joe. Yeah, she's weird as hell. She's goofy. She's funky. All that stuff. I feel bad for her. Cause I don't, especially when she's with Allie and there's like... The comment of her being an anorexic crackhead, like that kind of, and her mom asked her, like, did you do crack, which is horrible. Which is, it's, it's wild. Yeah, it's yeah. really sad. It's not horrible. It is. If she thought she was actually doing crack, and you have to read that you're an anorexic crackhead, like, that sucks. Well, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, yeah, she's a super weirdo. I Here's the thing. I think in a perfect world, Joe and Schwartz could go into a relationship, but that means more Joe on this show. I can't handle that. I agree. She's too goddamn weird. I look. She. I'm, and it could be an act. And that's the thing that I'm trying to figure out. Like, is she trying to put on this act? I think like, it's I'm amplified so a little bit just because it's TV. I but do too. I guess my my big thing is I feel bad for her because she's catching a ton of shit in social media, and she hasn't done anything malicious. She's just weird, and that's not fair. <laughs> this is the soft part of me talking. I can't help it. Uh, it's funny because like in. The day and age that we're in right now, you would imagine that all this bullying just for being weird would kind of go away. Nope. It hasn't. No, dude. especially just, with keyboard warriors. Yeah, it it's just it happen. just hasn't. And I I felt slightly bad for her a little bit later. And, you know, we don't really have to, because I don't want to, talk about the uh, astrology thing with Allie no, and we're Joe. Going to. I did feel slightly bad for her then because she actually did seem sad. When Allie yes. said it seems like a really good friendship, and you could tell Allie was backtracking a little bit immediately because she was able to gauge her she reaction. She backtracked way too far and goes, That's how some spouses get together. I was yeah, like, Whoa, bro, yeah, don't she put panicked. that in my head. <laughs> Allie panicked. That's the first time that we haven't seen Allie keep a cool head. No. And it's really funny because Joe was very sad. Yeah. I felt a little bad for her then. But she is so weird and so cringy. I just don't want to deal with her. Uh, which I, I, my life would be better if I don't have to watch I her on TV. I think that that's the general consensus. I'm just saying, is she getting too much shit for just being a quirky person? Because that makes me sad. You should. Yeah, be I mean, who people you need calling her people calling her an anorexic crack baby, crack no, head, crack head. Yeah, crack head. Crack baby. No, crack baby would imply that her mom was doing crack, and her mom asked her if she was doing crack. It was crack head. So nobody was doing crack. Nobody actually did of. crack that we're aware of. Okay. okay. Let's clear that up now. Yeah, let's let's wipe that off the floor. <laughs> but that's where I just started to feel bad, dude, honestly. And they're talking about, you know, they had a whirlwind summer last year where they did not date, but they were I in your definition friends with dating. Benefit. Yeah, friends with benefits. I don't know. It was it was a friends weird with thing. Benefit. The benefit was cutting hair. 
I guess. I guess. I don't know, man. But we get this weird turtle story, and she dropped <laughs> her fucking turtle in the sewer, and it's a ninja turtle now. Schwartz laughs his ass off, so I like it makes sense, bro. I don't it know. It does, but it's really hard to it's watch. It's so hard to watch. Even Schwartz doesn't want to date her, and it's like, oh, man, that's that's really stupid low. I that's just, about as low as you can go, and even he doesn't want to date you. I don't know. That's I, tough. I have such mixed feelings about it, but we get to this night out, and it starts out with Sandoval and the boys, and you know, Sheena's there and a couple of, her, of the VPR crew. And I was shocked because Ariana and Katie walk in the door. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. I was like, I had never thought we'd see this this season. Lala says it first. She goes, Ariana's coming in here to reclaim her friends. And thank God, because Sandoval has overtaken the group. Like yep. He inserted himself. And it's opportunistic when you look at it because he knows that Ariana's not going to get involved if he's around. He takes the lead, starts hanging out with them. Then we get a confessional with Ariana, and she's like, I can't let my ex keep me from hanging out with my friends. And that's 100% correct. And I do think that the group wants to hang out with you way more than they want to reconnect with Sandoval. I also understand this is a TV show and production is pushing certain things, so it might not be within your control. But I was very happy to see her walk into that room and we get all the ladies hang out. That's when we find, about, find out about croissant being the safe word. And... We start talking about Joe again and the fact that Allie is meeting up with Joe and Katie warns her. And her beef with her is valid, I think. Yeah, you know, it's the definitely text, valid. The text was weird. She did move in to the apartment just a couple of months after and got intimate with Schwartz. And like, I think that this looks a lot different had she not sent that text. I think Katie would still hate her. But I think that sending that text to console Katie and then moving in on her man, that's a fucking problem. Yeah, that's not cool. and I mean, you have to think Katie has to have an idea of who's going to be around her her fur babies. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, they got split custody. Who's influencing my little fur Wait, babies? Is that what Furby means? Fur baby. It's just wow. Whoa! Wait, maybe get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, you might be right. What Furbies? That's people, fur. Baby. I'm sure some people listening to this know what a Furby is. Some people don't. That's uh, you know what I was watching is this cake with with Poppy, and they made a Furby cake. No, well they, it was a '90s episode. Oh, and they brought a Furby out, and there was a kid that was in, he was like 21. He's in college, no clue what it was. No clue. Yeah, yeah. Tamagotchi. But I feel like our audience is more millennial. Yeah, I think so, our audience will understand. So what a you Furby guys is. will appreciate that. Did anybody know that? Am I right? Could I be right? Furby for baby. Yes, right guys. There's no way, right guys. You've been to the live show. You get that. <laughs> that one. could be. But yeah, no, Katie has to be mindful of who uh, who's influencing her little fur babies. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's how split custody works that's when you fair. have two dogs with your ex for you know a couple years removed now and get them on the weekends. Totes. You got Joe in between. Joe's the in between. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually kind of appreciate that if Joe was just the in between. If Joe took over like Anne. And she, and she was the Anne. Oh for, my God! For Katie and, would, and Schwartz. No, I want Joe to be the Anne Just for Anne for Sandoval Ariana and Ariana. And Sandoval. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want Anne to lose. Well, Anne doesn't work there anymore. She doesn't work for Sandoval anymore. But yeah, no, it just that's that's a good role for Joe. Yeah, I don't want her taking a main stage. I just want her to pop up every now and again, make things really awkward, and then go away. Yeah, and then like again, and then like. The confession, like, yeah, sure, her hair's a mess. and She like, shouldn't have a confessional. No, but she does. How and the like, fuck did she earn that? Are, that's where I feel bad again. Like, people are picking her apart for her hair. Like, she's just sitting she's there. She's a hairdresser. I know. And I, I said something that. about it last week, too. But now I feel bad because all she's doing is sitting and talking to the camera because she's on the show. And everyone's like, who the fuck is this? I'm like, that's fucking mean. <laughs> like, it is. I don't know. Sometimes you just have to be mean. You no, know? I'm not a mean person, despite my sarcasm. <laughs> But we know you're not mean. <laughs> the audience knows that you're a big soft. I know, I know. But whatever. We get to Schwartz, Sheena, and Tom, and they're talking about the sexy pool party. And Tom's like, it was rated G. I don't even know what the problem is. But we get a guys' night recap as well. And that's Brock had told Sheena that Sandoval feels that Raquel left him on an island, isolated, that she's not reaching out to him and not making an effort. And Here's my thing with this this scene specifically, because Sheena goes into, why can't you take ownership that you hurt her, and then takes it a step further and goes, and just tell Katie that the bar ruined her marriage because of your ego. And it's like, whoa, 
whoa, where the like where did that come from? And there's a point here where it's like you did this in Tahoe. It seemed to go decently, right? It didn't go great, but you did address it in Tahoe. It seemed to somewhat smooth things over. It seems like you're rehashing the same exact bullshit and now adding an extra layer, which is random, to blame Katie, or sorry, blame the divorce on Sandoval. Yes, he was a proponent of it. And yes, the bar played a big part of it. We know that. Katie's admitted that. Tom Schwartz has admitted that. Like, we get that. Why is that being brought into Scandival? I don't know. That's a good question. Like, why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that has nothing to do with him cheating. Yeah, I, I don't really know. I think that at this point, at least in obviously this season falling out, everything comes back to Scandival, whether it makes sense or not. So he's like, inv- and look, I mean, Tom involves himself in everything. And that's kind of how he got back in the quote unquote good graces with everyone. So I, I don't know. Maybe. I just don't. I don't get what the. I don't point. see the correlation. Yeah, I don't it see the wasn't, point. There is none. Yeah. There is none. Like, yeah, you, you now you're asking him to take accountability for every bad thing he's done, which, yeah. yeah, sure, in a perfect world. But at the same time, we're trying to clear the air for Scandival. You're trying to get back on the same page with him. Yeah. So it's just weird. I don't understand what the approach was there, but. Sandoval throws a fit and he's like, I'm sick of being the scapegoat. I don't have an ego. You are a walking ego, sir. That is all you are. Like literally top to bottom, head to toe, the outfits you wear, the fucking nail polish, everything about you screams. I have a massive ego. I think it's, it could just be like boiled over frustration for some people because even though they're hanging out with him again, he still hasn't taken the accountability. No, he hasn't. And so now it's like, all right, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to throw everything at you. Everything that ever ha- anything that's happened bad in the world, it's now your fault. But see, that's going to negate a lot of it because that's where it gets a lot easier to play the card of everybody in this group has done something fucking yeah. mean and bad and they've admitted to it. But I think it's it, that's why I'm saying it's just frustration because they've been trying to hone in on just him taking accountability for what he did in this instance, and he's not doing it. No, I agree. So I guess they're just kind of shooting it like random shit at this point. Yeah, and James steps in and he's like, "What the fuck, man?" And Sandoval's like, "I'm not groveling anymore. Like we've all made mistakes. You haven't groveled, not not once. Once. That's the thing that everyone's trying to get across. Yeah, I think that Sheena throwing the Katie thing in there derailed any." progress that you've made up until yeah. this point because it doesn't make any sense but at the same time you've yet to actually grovel if you did this might look differently and if you did it, it genuinely not where you start the crocodile tears and say how much you're hurt by this too that's the separation that he needs to have is like we don't care that you were the target of a lot of shit for a while that was your own doing did it go too far yeah we've all said that we all get that but at the same time you can have that conversation If you clear the air and take accountability now and then down the road in like 30 years, maybe 40 years, then you can talk to them and be like, hey, guys, you were kind of fucking mean back in the day. 40 years? Yeah, 40. He's 80? Yeah. Still having sexy singles parties? Still having white nail polish? In that same house? He has white nail polish on. He's still Uh in that house. Ombre. My bad. My bad. It's ombre. You're right. But moving forward, we get to Sheena and Brock and more nanny talk. And I will say... Brock's grown on me this season because this scene, I thought Sheena was being a little bit unreasonable. I don't know where I'd land on this. I feel it's like, just like just every different. other episode, they just keep changing. And I'm, I don't want to say that I like one or the other in any of these situations because Brock has done some crazy shit when Absolutely. it comes down to this. Yeah. So he, like he's not out of the doghouse for that. Sheena, sometimes she makes sense. Sometimes she just makes absolutely no sense more times than not, actually. I'm just not going to agree with either of them. I don't need to take a side on this one. No, that's fair. That's fair. But I, I, I there's Brock's growing on me. That's that's my only point. And they're still trying to figure out this nanny thing. And Brock said that his reasoning is that he wants to be able to be a good father, or husband, businessman, and needs to have freedom to do so. I agreed. It's got to be kind of frustrating that because Sheena is without a schedule and Brock wants to be scheduled, and there's no there's no middle ground what between does Brock these two. Do? He has a fitness app, and then he is also a fitness coach in some capacity. He also posts videos on his Instagram. Yeah, because when he said businessman, like, I laughed, and I didn't know why I laughed because I really didn't know what he did. Yeah, so he it has. It just seemed weird to me that he said businessman. He's got a fitness app, and then he does a fitness thing with this one chick that he like. There's a video of him on Instagram, like <laughs> picking her up by her ass. Like I'm sure Sheena doesn't love it. Seems reasonable, but yeah. seems very Dancing with the Stars, actually. Hey. Full circle. Full circle. No, I just, I think I imagined, subconsciously, I imagined Brock in a suit, and that kind of made me laugh. No, no, it's fitness-centric, but 
they start chit chatting about Sandoval and the recap there, trying to talk to him. And then they get to Ariana. And Brock makes a good point here. And he says that I'm concerned because Ariana hasn't really had a second to slow down. Mm -hmm. I also appreciated Sheena's comment. Well, maybe it won't. Like that's it shows that she still has Ariana's best interest at heart somewhere in there. Not maybe not best interest at heart, but she still is, wants to be friends with Ariana. It's not completely gone because of jealousy. So that's refreshing to see. But it's a good point. And I don't know if, you know, I, I would imagine, at least based on interviews and what we've seen in the press, that Ariana is far enough past this that she's not going to slip into like some really, really sad thing. But at the same time, it's an interesting point because since Scandaval started, she took center stage so fast and big things started happening. She really has not stopped. Yeah. Commercials, Broadway, you name it. She's been in the limelight. When this does slow down eventually, and it will, I'm not saying that she won't have a career further past this in acting or Broadway or whatever, but there's going to be some downtime eventually that she has not had yet. Do you think that it's going to be an, a weird transitional period where things will maybe will set in a little bit more, or do you think that she's past it enough? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it'll probably settle in. Now, there is one thing that she can definitely do to take up a little bit more time if she does need it. Clean those goddamn boxes out of your rooms. I swear to God, <laughs> every time that it, it's so sad. And Katie even said it. Where's she supposed to like, put them? When Ariana walks away and gets out of it, like everything just gets cold and dark. Oh it's yeah, like, I don't know what the hell's going on here. It is weird. The it, it's just it is a sad place. It's a sad house. You need to get the fuck out of that house. Get those boxes out of your goddamn bedroom, and you'll feel better. That if she slows true. down and she goes back to that house and she sits in that room and she's a little claustrophobic, then yeah, things are gonna settle in pretty quickly. That's actually a valid point. That's a valid point. What was the uh, the Netflix show? It's like uh, <laughs> the opposite of like the th like space brings you happiness. The oh the, the woman the, that was... the lady that would organize things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I forget, but yeah, her name. That was you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because yeah. that was like peak COVID. People yeah. were like reorganizing all their shit. Yep. What have we lived in weird times? We now. have. Wow. We should write a book someday. Nope. <laughs> but anyway, we get to Sandoval. And he is back on the tread. We've got to show the workout scenes. Have you noticed that anytime it starts off with a one-off Sandoval scene and he's not out and about, he's either doing push-ups or on the treadmill? Yep. We get it, bro. We get it. You work out. We understand. It's cool. Nice. And then the other Fitness. the other thing you got to do is go make a fucking protein shake and you have to announce that. Instead of saying, Tom's going to come down, I'm going to come down and make a protein shake. I just worked out. That's definitely what that text said. Absolutely. But he goes downstairs, and Katie's there. Ariana goes upstairs, obviously. Sandoval goes downstairs, and in his confessional, he's like, you know, I want to do right by Sheena, and I think that the way to do that is to apologize to Katie. So he goes downstairs to apologize. Wrong person. She's not yeah. going to hear you out, and she shouldn't hear you out. This is, that is the, that is the epitome of his ego. Yes, yeah. He thinks that he can apologize to Katie, and maybe... She'll accept it. Yeah. That's insane. Wild. The one per you have a better chance of apologizing to Ariana Seriously. and her accepting it than Katie. Yeah, Katie is it's fucking delusional. Steadfast. And that's but that's where he's gotten. He feels like he's somehow manipulated the entire group into hanging out with him again. Mm -hmm. People are back on his side. You can see the the changing of the tides. You've got Lala and Sheena that are starting to get jealous of Ariana. That's gonna bring them a little closer to Tom. Now he feels like, wow, I've got all this power. I'm going to yield it and throw it right back at Katie and see if that works. No, dude. No. It didn't. And it's a good reality check. Uh, it's so great. Because I think that you're right. I think that he got this false sense of of hubris where he's like, oh, I'm going to be able to smooth things over with everybody. Katie, it's your turn now. Time to woo you. It's what we talked about before when he apologized to James. He felt that high of, yeah. wow, like this is good. I apologized a little bit. I didn't really grovel too much, even though he thinks he's groveling. Didn't really grovel. Didn't have to do a whole lot. Got accepted back in. This is awesome. Yeah. Now he wants to go after the main thing. He wants to get that main high, go after Katie. If he gets that, that's going to be awesome. He's chasing the dragon. Get fucked, dude. <laughs> get absolutely fucked. That's a good way to put it, sir. But she's not buying it. And she says, at the end of the day, Tom, you fucked up. And it was fathomless. I like that word. She's used it twice now. I wasn't sure if it was a real word. I wasn't either. I had to look it up. Now that she said it twice, oh, I didn't even look it up. Yeah, I, I had to look it up. She it's doubled real. down on it, and I'm like, oh, it has to be real. Yep. Because she said it at, at dinner with Lala and Sheena the other day. So now I'm, I'm all, fathomless is a great word. And Tom's she like, has a word calendar. 
Ooh, we maybe should we should. Oh, we should have, and we have, have right to here. use it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love right, this I like bit. That. Yeah, that's nice. Good. That's good. See how long it takes us to come up with bits, but yep. once we do, we're excited. All right, we'll get a word calendar done. Super fun, but <laughs> super fun. We've been here for a long time. This is hour five in the studio. Yeah, we've today. been here for a, in the stew. <laughs> in the stew, studio bro. Woof. <laughs> it was fathomless, and. Tom's like, oh, it was fathom. Like you can't possibly fathom it. And she has the most succinct response ever in all of Scandaval. What she responds to him with, she's like, I get it more than anybody. I walked away from a marriage in which I loved this person. I actually still loved him, and I had to walk away from it because he wasn't loving me the way that I wanted to be loved. I didn't have an affair with his best friend. I had the balls pretty much to end it and walk away from it because it wasn't right for me. You big, big pussy. That's what she said to Tom. And that was perfect. It was chef's kiss. And Tom says, I'm just trying to be accountable. And she's like, if you want to be accountable, move differently. Stop inviting people over here. Stop inviting chicks over. Because of the optics, period. It's disrespectful to Ariana. It looks like shit. It's hard to believe that you're trying to take accountability when you keep doing things to question your accountability. That's the biggest thing that Katie's trying to get across. Tom doesn't hear it. He doesn't hear it at all. He goes, give me some grace. No. No. Not going to do that. You don't no. deserve it. He says, and I had to rewind it. Like, he didn't just say that. He's walking upstairs. He goes, you look good. The fuck are you doing? What, what do you mean? <laughs> hey, by the way, you look good. I didn't know to, like whether or not to take that seriously. I thought that he was in his own weird Tom way, like trying to take a dig at her for something. No. I think he was genuine. I think that was him trying to be like the 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 he's hurt like puppy awkward... dog. Like he's like, I'm trying here and you're not letting me, but you look good. And like, yeah, <laughs> he's trying to like lay the seeds out there. Like, all right, maybe if I just compliment her a little bit here and there, that that'll work. It's I not think... gonna work on Katie. You know what I think he thought genuinely? It's a, wait, it's the same thing he did to Sheena. Oh, he talked about the fucking uh, what was it? not the Whitney Houston uh, Shania Whitney, Twain. Whitney I don't Houston. Know where, I don't know where I was going. You said Whitney Houston. Houston. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this is back? Woo! No, the Shania Twain thing where he said that Sheena looked like her riding down oh, on a motorcycle. Yeah. He complimented her. It worked with Sheena. He tried it again with Katie. It's not going to work with not Katie. Not going to work with Katie. I think that he thought it went better than it did. And he's like, this is a if good you, starting point. Yeah. If you were to ask him, he'd be like, you know, I, I feel like I kind of kind of got in there a we little bit. We made progress. <laughs> I feel better than I did before. Oh, well, the next scene, we get the Toms hanging out and we get to hear about. Uh, more Raquel stuff. And this this scene was so fucking fake and yeah. so fucking dumb. And every Raquel scene is. Every Raquel scene is. Because, again, it goes back to the reunion. You said you're no longer in love with her. And now we're getting a whole different story after watching you gallivant the country with your stupid band. And nothing screams, I miss Raquel, until you get back on camera. And now you're talking about your fucking journaling again. And let me get this out there. There's nothing wrong with journaling. Tom Sandoval brings a bad name to journaling. Yep. Put it that way. Also, if you, well, a little PSA. If you do journal, do not talk about it all the time. Yeah, you don't have to. Just don't talk about it in yeah. public. Go ahead and journal. That works for you. Don't talk about you it. You don't need to. It's yeah. like it's it's like a look at me thing. You know, I'm going to make jokes. If yes. you tell me in person, right. I will make jokes. Yeah, journal behind, yeah, journal doors. to yourself. Behind closed doors. You don't doors. have to because if you're like, I get it if you want to take your journal somewhere, but like, just don't talk about it. Be about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still might like it. I, I don't know why, but I imagine somebody going down to like sitting at a lake, like the sunset. And you're like writing a poem in your journal or something. What's wrong with that? <sighs> it's lame. You're it's really lame. lame. You're fucking lame. That's really lame. Let people express themselves, you asshole. Yeah, through poetry. Sure. <laughs> Grow up. You're, oh my God. Confucius. That's, can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long day. What do you want? Uh, Anywho. But he's talking about how journaling and not drinking connects him to Raquel because she was journaling and not drinking. Like, we're grasping at the smallest of straws here. I think that's how that works, right? It, it's, no. In, the, in the spiritual world, if you do the same thing as somebody else, you are connected to them. I No, no. You were going to say, I guess. No, first. I was <laughs> to a certain point, but then I'm like, no, that's fucking dumb. This is dumb. Stupid this is dumb. Ever. And But here's something interesting. This is really interesting because he pulls out... Three photos from when he was on Special Force. He's like, I snuck these in. It's him and Rachel. Uh-huh. Now, there was a rumor from a cast member that he had a physical photo, naked photo of Rachel that he showed another castmate. This, to me, 
is damning evidence. You have photos. You have physical photos, like printed out photos. Yeah. As bad as it got, obviously, you know, with the whole sharing of the video and, you know, Raquel now suing Tom and Ariana, I never really believed that. The photo even, thing? Even with, I, I believed that he had photos of her. I never really believed the naked photo thing. No, you didn't? It, even if, like, I can still separate all of this and be like, okay. That's, that was a little too far. I think that's just... Somebody wanted a little pub. Throwing somebody wanted to throw that out fire. there, and like maybe I'll get this picked up somewhere. I'll get a quick payday, whatever. I could just tell my quote unquote story because this is the thing: the people on that special forces show, mm-hmm. aside from when Shaq did it, everybody else, they're all like celebrities that have moved past their like day. Rafael Palmero. They're just like. done. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're they're done with their celebrity lives. They're grasping at straws, just trying to get anything done. I never really believe that. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, but I, I did think it was interesting that he pulls out physical photos. That's all. But he just wishes that, you know, when she got out, they could reconnect and things would be better. And he goes to the closet and cries. Like, bro, stop it. Stop it. But the thing is, Schwartz even says it. He might be right in this sentiment where he's like, I think you're at the tail end of this. Like, I think you're about to bounce back from all of this. And I think he really is. And and he actually makes a funny joke, and he's like, "What am I? I'm, I'm fucking. I'm Scott Peterson." And I, I laughed because that was funny. No, no, that's him doing the same thing that he did the New York Times article, except the opposite. Instead of him painting himself as a victim, he's painting himself as an absolute villain. I'm not saying that I'm like, "Oh, good one, Tom." No, I'm but why does he keep doing this? I don't well, know. This, well, this is actually before he did the New York Times article, so he started off with Scott Peterson, and then at some point later got himself to George Floyd. Yeah. So he worked his way from making himself a villain to making himself a victim. Yeah. Yes, he did. That's And an... comparing himself to polarizing people in the press at that point in time. I thought it was funny. I, I guess. The Scott Peterson one, not it, the, the other one. Yeah, no. It, it was kind of funny, but it's the exact same thing. And Maybe. that's that's where my brain went, oh, this is what he's doing. He's just going to keep comparing himself to polarizing people that have done either terrible things or had terrible things done to them, depending on what he wants to do. It made me laugh. Okay. Okay. You can yeah, laugh. That's all I'm saying. It made me laugh. Who but. am I to tell you not to laugh? You know? Nobody. You, nobody. But we get to Ariana's party, and it's like a game night, and we find out. And apparently this is this is a rumor that's been out there because Dev had heard about it. But apparently, not only was Brock in an orgy, but Sheena was in an orgy with John Mayer. John Mayer. Because she drops a super subtle hint that at one point my body was the Wonderland. <laughs> it's like, well, we all know who you're talking about. Yeah. Great job, Sheena. I guess this is true. No. Fuck no. Dev said that she's heard this before, before this even happened. From probably Sheena. Why is that hard to believe that she boinked John Mayer? That's not in an orgy, especially. Well, I mean, she, There's no, she actually boinked him. Man, you know damn well you John Mayer's was going in there? to orgies. Maybe. They're friends. And he could have been in there. No, hey, we don't kink shame here. No. I'm just trying to get to the bottom. No, no not at all. Yeah. If you're, I, it, it, the I, least surprising news ever is that John Mayer's at an orgy. Well, yeah, for sure. But it's, but it's just Sheena, and like I just don't believe her because she's such a look at me person. I believe it. And there's other people are getting publicity, and she's not. And she's like, you know what? I've got a funny story, and then she just makes something up. I don't, I think she did it. Uh, I I believe that. I don't know why I believe this one, I, but I, I don't believe it. I don't think so. Well, I do. I think she knows somebody who was in an orgy with John Mayer. Oh, maybe maybe Brock was. Maybe there. Maybe it was Brock. Oh, Brock. The other dude was John Mayer, uh-huh. and now Sheena's trying to steal his thunder. Yep. Man, that would be a funny fight. Who fucked like, John like Mayer? <laughs> two or three episodes from now, Brock comes in and he goes, "I just heard that you were in a orgy with John Mayer." Oh, and him and getting then upset it, and, about it, and he's pissed off about it, but not because he didn't know that she was in an orgy with John Mayer, because it's actually his story. You stole my story. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, wow, man. that's not gonna happen. That no, would be but great, that's, that's how I would do the show. Well, we finally get to the last scene and. That is dude's night, man. Schwartz has another this, boy's night. Another boy's night, and Schwartz has this master plan. He says that we need to bring somebody in that can talk some sense into Tom, somebody that's been through this before. It's actually not a bad sentiment. It's just the cast of characters, like the person you're bringing in to deliver this message. It's probably not going to go over super well because that person is Jax, and obviously this is the the crossover scene. We all knew this was going to happen. Like we've 
we've heard about this before the season even started. I don't even know if we heard about this. I think everybody just came to the same conclusion that this is exactly what was going to happen. Well, we heard about the crossover thing. So we like... knew about the crossover, but even before then, we had said, oh, we know Jax is coming Jax back is going to be on that episode right before yes. the Valley premieres. Yeah. But Jax arrives, and he... But Jax arrives, and Tom points out that and I actually agree with this. There is some unspoken competition. And if you watch the earlier episodes, because Jax needed to be the number one guy in the group at all times, there was this unspoken competition with Sandoval and he does thrive when he sees other people fail. Like that's oh, Jax's yeah. favorite thing is watching other people crash and burn. So that was actually true, but he comes in fucking guns Blazing. I appreciated it. I loved it. This is exactly what we needed. It's exactly what we needed and exactly what I expected. Uh -huh. Then he comes in and he goes, it's good to see you, man. Like, you look good, which is good because I saw a post like three days ago and you looked like you were 50, which is funny because it sounds really mean. That's like five years away for Tom. Yep. That's not that crazy to say. When I heard it, I was like, damn. And then I was like, he's like, he's not that far off. No. So it's not really that big of an insult. And then immediately bashes the fingernails. Yeah, and that's when we find out that they're ombre. They're ombre. They're not white. that's an important distinction. He just ripped you apart, and you have to stop and be like, they're ombre. They're ombre. And you could even see it like Sandoval squirming. He's He feels like he's in the, he's like, how how in the world is Jax here? Why is he here? He's the last person that should be talking to me. He's the first person that should be talking to you, probably, clearly, because all these other fucking cowards are afraid to tell you how they feel and to tell you that you're an asshole. Yeah. You've somehow skated through everything, and it's been infuriating for us to watch because you have yet to apologize. This makes the most sense. Bring Jackson. Let him just tee off on you. And he does. Let him make you feel like a piece of shit, and you're squirming and looking for help from the other ones. No one else is stepping up because, again, they're cowards. No, James is laughing. Yeah. James, well, James is, is having a good time. James is having it, It's guy's night. James is having a good time at guy's night. Guy's night. <laughs> oh, I miss Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> but Jack starts to go into it, and, there. I mean, there's two ways you could look at it. Yeah, he should be the last person to talk about it, only because, like, yes, he has changed his life around, mm -hmm. but what we're hearing in real life versus what we're seeing on, like, the Valley and press and stuff like that he doesn't have his shit together. In last week's episode, we heard that there's still rumors all over Beverly Hills or L.A. about Jax still stepping out on Britney. They're living in separate houses. Like, no, your shit's not really together. So, no, you aren't the foremost expert on the matter. However, like you said, he is the first person to because, yeah, he's done everything that you've done. And for better or worse, Jax did take accountability for it. He has. Like, he's owned up to it. Like, yeah, I did all of that, and I that's who I am or who I was. He's claiming that's no longer who he is. I don't believe that. But he at least took accountability. So, yeah, he is a good person to try to get this across to you. Again, Sandoval's big reply is, you relentlessly talk shit about me. And Jack's like, the whole fucking world did, yeah. dude. Everyone that's was the talking right shit. answer. Like, yes. You've said that to everybody up until now. You said the same thing to Jax. You said the same thing to Sheena, Lala, everybody who's been talking about this. They kind of moved around it. They said, well, yeah, you know, maybe it did go a little too far or whatever. Jax is 100% correct. Everyone was talking we about it. We all were. We were talking about it. Every Bravo podcast, every fucking pop culture podcast. The fucking show, White House. The White House. Everybody was referencing what was going on. You're an idiot. Like, people are going to talk about the things that happened. You did something that was polarizing and terrible and stupid. They're going to talk about it. Yeah. So thank, which is weird, that Jax comes in as the voice of reason. Thanks God. Thanks God for Jax. What? Thank God for Jax. Hell. <laughs> Either way. I never thought I'd hear you say that. No, that was what I was saying. Like, I never thought I would say this, but like, yeah. And Jax says, at some point, sometimes you seem to tuck your tail between your legs and humble yourself. Great advice. Again, right. However, it's tough because... Tom's reply, I'm not going to humble myself to you. And again, like, yeah, okay, fine. But he's not saying humble yourself to me. He's saying yeah. humble yourself to everybody around because you have yet to do that. And that's the biggest thing. We've talked about it at <laughs> nauseum. Jax gets there 30 seconds later. He's telling Sandoval that he needs to apologize to him directly. That would be really funny. <laughs> I could see Jax doing that, but also that's too. not what he meant. I could too. But he says to Sandoval, he's like, you're me seven years ago. And you are. Like, uh, for better or worse, like, yeah, you are Jax seven years ago. The difference is Jax, at the very least, 
cop to all of his shit. He went on an apology tour and he said sorry and he tried to get back together with Britney and it worked, all of that stuff. But he's like, you're a disgrace. I've got a great wife, a home, and that's when, this is where he starts to lose me. Because I'm like, mm, yep. you don't have those things. Nope. You're lying now. And that takes away, not that you have any credibility, but it does take away some of the oomph because we're watching the Valley now and we're also seeing that Britney's been living in an Airbnb since January 24th. I don't know why I remember that exact date, but I do. So Jax has to bounce and they do end up kind of squashing it somewhat. They hug it out. He says, you know, I don't want to hate you. He has his name tattooed on his arm, which I forgot about. It says Tom, Tom and I, which is actually kind of a funny tattoo. Honestly, if it wasn't Sandoval on his arm, yeah. it's kind of funny. I thought this scene was very necessary. I wish that Sandoval was able to receive some of it better. It's tough because of the person that's coming from. On there's two ends to it. On one More end, than anything, I'm pissed that it ended with like a bro hug. Yeah, like a all right, you know what? Like you, you said your piece. We're good because that means that Tom can just move on, and he's going to. Yeah. They're cool now. Like they're good now, and like they've they've talked about that. Jax has been in the media saying things. He was in the media before the season even aired saying things. So he's still going to be in the rest of the season too. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's. It's this wasn't just the first one oh, episode. Oh, I thought it was a one-off. No, he's going to be back because there's the, during the mid-season trailer they were talking about Jack, like Lisa was talking about Jack's being on the show again. Oh, so there's more to come from this. All right, I don't. Well, hate if he it. keeps the same energy, it might at least he rile always, well, up. He always has. Like you can count on him for consistency. I just need him to like rile up the rest of the group, which it's not going to happen. I know that I'm just like pleading for something to happen. That no, I he's going to be on Sandoval's team. What are you talking about? You think he's just completely yeah. going to flip? I, don't I think, think I don't will. think immediately. I think eventually he's going to come to Sandoval's defense. I do. Mm. That's my bold prediction. If he's going to be on this show, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. But in his confessional, we get the lead up to you know we obviously get that one quip where he's in the confessional saying, "That's not me anymore, man. I don't. I can't be up past ten. I got to go home. I want to go to bed. Like I love my life, my family." He gets in his Uber. He's like, God, I just want to stay here till two AM and do shots of Schwartz get fucked up. Like that's Jax. That we well, haven't you haven't changed, yeah. sir. We know that. And and this is where we get the transition to the valley, which was flawless. It was a great transition. You get the confessional. It seemed heartfelt. We know it's not, but it seemed heartfelt. He gets up, kind of like he's closing this chapter of Vanderpump. Finally, he can finally move on, and he moves on to his own show. And if you haven't listened to our valley recap yet, go back and listen to that because it's out. But all in all. Vanderpump is delivering. It took a f- about five episodes to get them warmed up, but they've hit their stride. It's an enjoyable season. I have no idea what to expect moving forward. Yeah, I don't know. No clue. I'm okay. I'm good with that, though. I am, too. I'd rather it be like this than predictable. Yes. And, and again, look, I mean, there are different paths that they can take from here. A lot of them are annoying, and we're going to get tired of it. But there are a few paths in there. They can keep it fresh, keep it good. And at least entertaining until the end of the season. I think that it's going to be a good season. I think it's going to end on not a good note, but I think it's going to be a good, entertaining season if they can carry this momentum. I think that we'll have one, one or two more clunkers. I think that's unavoidable. But I think overall we're going to look back at what could potentially be the last season and say they did a good job. But let's get to some questions so we can wrap up this three-peat day because your boys tuckered out. Oh, yeah. Uh, first up from... Tom Whitrick, could they have just brought Jax and Kristen back to VPR? No. 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 I think that's just a resounding no. Yeah, I don't think that that would work. I think that would put a big damper on this season, honestly. Oh, this sucks. Boink, marry, kill from Sabrina Saba. All right, lay it on me. Sandoval, Jax, Schwartz. Boink, marry, kill? Mm -hmm. I'm going to marry Schwartz because he... I, I don't think that he is as sweet but as he he's tries so to He's so sad. Off. Yeah, but it's okay. He'll I don't drag you I, down into I his depression pit. Be a life partner with either of the other two. Yeah. Um a life partner. I would probably like anger bang Jax. And then uh never thought I'd say that sentence. And then I'm gonna kill Sandoval. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the only answer. Yeah. Um this is kind of funny because we did this. Uh, from Victoria got a smartphone. Please start talking. <laughs> I really like that. That's name. a good one. Please start talking about the after show. Sometimes more insight than the episode. We, we did talked today. about the after show today. You're welcome. We did it because of you. you. Nah, but no. it worked out well, didn't it? Victoria got a smartphone. And good for you, by the way. Congratulations. That's good exciting. job. Yeah, we're proud of you. Yeah. What kind? 
Are you one of those? Are you an Android person? Do you turn the group chat green? Uh, uh, it's not much of a smartphone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Take a dig at Androids. <laughs> uh, we've actually gotten this question before. We're going to do two more. Marissa and Palma said, how much money would it take for the bros to be a Sandoval assistant? Oh, yeah. Uh, Do we ever land on a number for that? I think 200K. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Uh, Last question from Emma Charles. How are you guys feeling about Lala? She feels very produced these days. She's definitely produced. She's definitely doing it all for the show. Yep. I will say this. A lot of it's working, so I'm not complaining. I'm not going to complain about it, but I, I will point out, and we've, you know, we've kind of gone through different phases with Lala, and we've seen her change a lot. We've even given her credit, saying that you know she's gotten better and she seems she softer. has gotten better. I, I'm she's gotten better at playing the game in my mind. Maybe I think yeah. she's gotten better at being sneakily manipulative, where mm. she doesn't do a lot of it. But she is in Sheena's ear, and she's allowing Sheena to kind of operate. And you see that. I mean, like, really, the only real moment that we've had from Lala this season where I'm like, okay, that's Lala, is when her and Katie are talking because she doesn't cut, she cuts the bullshit when she talks to Katie. Because Katie Katie sees yeah. through it, and she'll call her out. Yeah. So that's a real moment. The rest of it, there's always an ulterior motive. There's always something going on with her. I just don't believe a lot of the stuff that she says and does in a lot of these scenes, especially when it comes to Sandoval. Interesting. Which is good. I mean, by the way, kudos to her because it's great for the show. Yeah, no, playing we we appreciate playing the game well oh, yeah. as long as it doesn't seem overly produced, forced, overly produced. Yeah, and I, I actually, I guess I would, I would disagree with. Uh, I think it was Emma that asked that question. I would disagree with it being overproduced. Yeah, I think she's just playing the game correctly. I think she's playing the game well. I think there are moments that it slips, and you can mm-hmm. see that she's trying to do too much, but. All in all, Lala's having a very solid season in my book. Yeah, I agree. They all really are. They've all kind of hit their stride like the show has, and I don't really don't have complaints about anybody on the cast right now. No. They're all kind of bringing what they bring to the show. Aside and from like, you know, the obvious complaints about just the, how they are. But, right, right. But, or yeah. Joe, you know. <laughs> I complain about Joe. I'm on the fence. I told you. I don't know. Such a softy. Uh, anyway. But wouldn't you be really sad if, like, all you're doing is talking to the camera and you're fucking a weirdo, but, like, you're just sitting there talking and there is thousands, thousands of comments about your hair, your looks, how fucking weird you are, and she has not done anything malicious to anybody but Katie. The text sucked. Oh, all that. That's my yeah. Point. You know that that's a really good point, and that takes me to my next point. We've got two live shows coming up. <laughs> Make sure you get those tickets. The first show is May third. That's a Friday night in DC at the Union Stage. Huge auditorium. We want to try to pack that in as much as we possibly can. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Bring your grandmother. Everybody's gonna have a great time. Make sure you get them tickets. Bring for your that. kids. Bring your kids. Who the hell cares? Bring everybody. Yeah, we'll bring try to not all. say fuck so much. We'll try. Don't bring your kids. No promises. Don't bring your kids. And then on top of that, we've got another show up in Boston. That's on June 14th, another Friday night. That's a much smaller area, much smaller room at the City Winery. Venue. Venue. (laughs) That's the word I was looking for. We've got a smaller venue up in Boston, City Winery. Make sure you get them tickets because there's probably, I don't know, we kind of make up numbers because we haven't looked in a couple of weeks. Five. It could be sold out for all I know. Let's just say five. We'll say five. We'll take a look. And it's if it probably is, a little bit more than five, but there was no more than 20-something left like two weeks ago. So. Yeah, so I imagine it's it's down to single digits. So get them tickets, fill it out, and uh, that's all I got. You got anything else? Go bros. Go bros. <laughs> Good job. Let's go to bed. Not together. Let's. What? Bye.